Welcome to Story Collider. Yeah! <laughs> awesome. So the other day, I was getting ready, rushing around, going to work. It was Monday. It was my big day at work, and I went out to feed my chickens. And there was a hawk in the chicken coop. Not good for anyone. So in the process of getting rid of the hawk, some of my chickens got out. And I went to get them back in. I had already put food in there, so that wasn't going to get them back in. And there is a very careful process for herding chickens. If you go directly at the chicken, you will never catch the chicken, at least in my own experience. So I did my chicken herding process. I have my arms out. I'm walking towards them, not too slowly, not too quickly. They go in, but then there's the third chicken. She doesn't go in, and she's around the side of the coop, so I go and I try my patient chicken thing, and then I get overwhelmed with impatience. I gotta go to work, so I want to grab the chicken. Did I tell you before it never works? It doesn't work. <laughs> she, <laughs> she hops the fence into my neighbor's yard, and it's a bramble there. So I go around, I'm trying to catch her, so I do what every modern person does. I get on my phone, I go to YouTube, <laughs> to try to find a video, how to catch a chicken. <laughs> it's YouTube. There's a choice. I select, I select the taking the coat hanger, making it into a hook to grab the chicken's ankle. Why I thought this was going to work. <laughs> The, the guy in the video is in this yard, it's like this big. I have all these trees and branches. I'm sitting there with a hook and I'm thinking, you are a complete idiot. It's not gonna work. So I leave, I go to work, I'm driving to work and I am mad at the chicken. <laughs> I'm blaming her because doesn't she know how dangerous it is? Last year I had a bear eating my chickens in the coop. There's, there's um, bobcats. I live right. I live in Boulder, Colorado, right next to the open space, and I am not kidding. <laughs> bobcats, coyotes, foxes, and so on. And then I realize this is your fault. You're blaming the chicken. Well, no, I don't realize this actually very quickly. This is the sad story part of the story. <laughs> I feel good about blaming the chicken until there's this dawning brief moment. Where I'm thinking, huh? You're blaming the chicken. This is probably really not very smart. So then I realized it's my fault. I didn't follow the process. I didn't follow the chicken herding process. And in the process, I put her actually in some danger, and I felt bad about that. And as a scientist, we trust the process. We have a scientific method. All of us have, I mean, I live and die by a process. Uh, just for example, I ran here from giving a talk at the meeting, um, talking about Yellowstone. Uh, uh, we're mapping the groundwater that um, feeds all these iconic features like Old Faithful. It's totally awesome. And, you know, of course, I have to find the right kind of data that see that. I, it's, it's electromagnetic data. And, you know, we have helicopters, and we got to deal with the park and do this whole process of making sure we collect the right data, good data, make sure our models are working. Uh, they weren't for a while. Coming to this meeting, getting more information, getting input from people. So there's this whole process to come up with a really good result to help us solve the problem. So I'm kind of used to living my life like that. And about 12 years ago, I was elected general secretary of AGU, which is the treasurer. I was also the supervisor of the uh, executive director, which is pretty silly. Um, and that was before I was president. And I went into this thinking, you oh, know, there's going to be some process by which, you know, we govern. It seemed like it at first. I, I had been in the organization for a while. I, I was very close to the executive director. He was a mentor and a friend to me. But pretty quickly, well, not pretty quickly, it's just kind of like the chicken in the car. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> um, in retrospect, it was quick, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, I started to see, you know, AG is a great organization and has been for a long time. Our meet, at the time, our publications, high impact factors, we had a very popular meeting, growing membership, dedicated, long-serving staff. There was lots of great things about AGU. Same time, there were signs that AGU wasn't ready for the future. Um, they were still using Lotus 123 for the budget. Um, uh, and Word Perfect 2.0. Word Perfect 2.0. This is only 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, you get the picture, right? And, and there are other things, too. Lots, you know, there was decision making was all made at the top. The press people had to ask to buy a couple hundred dollar camera. There was lots of staff complaints. There was just a lot of things that were going on that were showing this dichotomy between looking great 
and not looking great. So, the, so we in the leadership thought, well, we need to make some changes. So we, we went to talk to the executive director who, was, as I said, was a mentor and a friend, said, hey, look, we need to do some things to prepare AGU for the future. His attitude essentially is what he said to us was, I've been running AGU fine. It's been for more than 35 years. It's been very successful. That was true. I can run it the same way for another 35 years. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe not, you know, I don't. But here's the problem. I had no idea what making AGU ready for the future was. I had no process. And I was part of a group, but I'm talking about my experience, so I'm not trying to take credit for everything, but I was certainly a huge part of making changes. So I felt like I was in this black tunnel, you know, the kind where you can't even see your hand in front of your face. I had no, I, had, I just knew I needed to do something, but I had no idea where to go, how long the tunnel was, how long I was gonna be in the tunnel, were there branches, and there were scary noises. And the, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, there was the scary noises were stuff like something would happen, I think, what is that? What am I supposed to do? I have no way of doing anything. And it, it was really horrible. And, you know, I, I'm, my day job is a scientist, but this was a huge part of my responsibility because I was an officer. I was really responsible for how the organization ran. So this went on for a while. And a lot of things that happened during this time seemed super random. So I had a, a friend of a friend came to town who did management consulting, whatever that is, and I explained to them <laughs> what's happening at AGU, and they say, well, I don't do that, but I have a friend who does nonprofit association management consulting. I'm like, okay, whatever that is. <laughs> and she might be able to help you. So I talked to the president at the time, and I say, hey, I have this person, maybe they can help us. And he's like, he had been head of an organization. He goes, you know, Sometimes these consultants can be useful. Let's just, let's just see it. I mean, I cannot tell you what an understatement that was. So I call up Mary Beth, and I explain the situation. I really, you know, it's, I just felt stupid. I didn't know what to call anything. I had no process. I had no names for anything. And she made me feel better pretty quickly because she said, she's like, oh, yeah, that situation. You know, <laughs> long-serving exec, great organization, needs changing, yeah. Yeah, been there, done that. And I'm like, oh, you know, dumbly. Oh, we're not alone, okay. So the lights didn't go on in the tunnel, but I didn't, the noises weren't so scary. And so we, we did hire her, and I mean, she radically helped us transform the organization. And a lot of people who are AGU members don't know, which is great, because it means we just did this really big structural change. We talked to us about governance, strategic planning, roles and responsibilities. We found out as the council that we were supposed to take care of legal and you know, reputational and um, financial parts of the union. We weren't doing that. We weren't doing our jobs at all. <laughs> and in fact, when the council found out that that was its job, they were like, they're all scientists. We don't want to do that. So in this <laughs> super radical move, they voted themselves out of existence. <laughs> And happily. And that was to pave the way for the, for the structure we have now, which is a science council where they all get to talk about science, and a board of directors, which does have scientists on it, but, but deal with all this stuff. And, you know, it, it went on and on. I mean, there, uh, there was lots of stuff, and it was so hard because the people we were going against was somebody who was very close to and a mentor. And I went through this period of trying to convince him of you know, how great this was gonna be, this change. And of course, he didn't want to change. I, I would like to say that I learned this lesson, but I still have to learn it over and over again. You can't convince people of things they don't want to hear or can't hear. I, you know, I still make that mistake. But in the end, I got a process. I, I had a goal, we, we, we had a picture. So I felt a lot better, but one of my friends when I was telling her about this talk said, but you had a process. You got more information, you asked for help. I was like, yeah, it's like, you know, okay. But um, so I just really, you know, got to appreciate again the situation of trusting a process and in the case where you don't have one, find one. So back to the chicken. <laughs> I go home from the work, the chicken is not dead. <laughs> she is pacing up and down along the fence wanting to go back in with the flock, but this time, I was like, okay, I'm not making the same mistake as this morning. Chickens don't see very well at night, so it's easier to catch them. 
It's also easier to kill them, uh, according to the foxes and the bears and things that have gotten in my chicken coop, for that reason. So anyway, I wait for my neighbor. If you have chickens, your neighbors are always involved for a long list of reasons. So I call my neighbor, Rob, ex-army. I say, Rob, you gotta come over. I have another chicken operation. You notice the word, another. He's been involved with several. So he's like, yes, ma'am, comes over. We wait till dark, wait a little too long, but it was okay. The chicken jumped in the tree to roost, so he climbed up together. They, don't, they can't fly very high, so it's okay. So he grabs the chicken, so you can grab the chicken under this case. This is one of the cases you can grab a chicken and get them. She makes this unearthly, horrible squawk, but he hands her to me, she calms down, she's in the coop. Hopefully she's still in the coop. So what I learned from all of this is, you know, whether it be science, association management, or chicken herding, Trust the process. <laughs>